Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The destructive marriage proposal of Mary Queen of Scots and Edward VI. King Edward VI is today remembered as the son of the brutal king Henry VIII. He carried on Henry's work with the Protestant Reformation, but when he came onto the throne, he was just a young boy. Because of this, a Regency Council was appointed to rule for him, and he would never reach maturity to govern his country and his own ideas and power. He died at a young age, being 15, when he succumbed to an illness inside of Greenwich Palace. But there had been big plans drawn up for the boy king. And there was one possible suitor for the king which would have changed history forever, if he would have married. There were calls by Henry VIII, Edward's father, for the young boy to be betrothed to Mary Queen of Scots, the woman who later would be executed by Edward's half-sister when she came onto the throne. But what is the story behind this proposed marriage? The matter of who a noble or a royal figure would marry during the Tudor period was very important. Many families would marry into other high-profile families to form alliances and further financial and land gain from joining of hands in marriage. Many high-profile noble men who had daughters raised them in such a way that they would be able to marry easily above their station, and with this the family of the daughter would have an elevated status. But for kings, it was incredibly important as to who their sons and daughters would marry. For Henry VIII, it was imperative that his children would marry important European princesses or princes to establish alliances with England. Henry had caused chaos breaking from the Roman Catholic Church, and it looked imminent that a Catholic force from the Holy Roman Empire or Spain would invade England. Through marrying his children off to powerful European families, this could help secure alliances in the threat of war. For Edward, his son, it was incredibly important whom he should marry. He was going to be Henry VIII's successor, and he needed a powerful queen one day. In the November of 1542, the Scottish army suffered a heavy defeat at the Battle of Solway Moss against the English, and following this, James V, the king, died shortly after. He was then succeeded onto the Scottish throne by his six-day-old daughter, Mary, Queen of Scots. But there was a plan devised between the English and the Scots for a proposed marriage for Mary to Prince Edward, the son of Henry VIII. On the 1st of July 1543, Henry VIII signed the Treaty of Greenwich securing peace, but also a betrothal to the seven-month-old Mary Queen of Scots and Edward. The Scots were in a weak position in bargaining, and Henry wished to unite England and Scotland, and he stipulated that Mary should be handed over to him and raised in England. At the time, the Scottish were favouring an alliance with France to continue Catholicism in Scotland. It was reported on the Scottish opinion of the marriage proposal that our people do not like of it, and though the governor and some of the nobility have consented to it, yet I know that few or none of them do like of it, and our common people do utterly mislike of it. I pray you give me leave to ask you a question. If your lad was a lass, and our lass was a lad, would you then be so earnest in this matter? And likewise I assure you that our nation will never agree to have an Englishman King of Scotland. And though the whole nobility of the realm would consent, yet our common people and the stones in the street would rise and rebel against it. In Scotland, civil war raged on, and the Scots also faced the anger of Henry VIII after the Treaty of Greenwich was renounced in the December of 1543. Five days later, war was declared in Edinburgh, and the War of the Rough Wooing began, mostly caused by hostilities between the two countries existing, and also the proposal to marry the Scottish Queen to the heir of the English throne. Edinburgh was attacked on the 3rd of May 1544, as Edward Seymour and John Dudley led the attack, and they had instructions to burn the city to the ground. It was said that all of the houses within the suburbs and the city walls were burned, including Holyrood House and the Abbey. The Englishmen then landed at Leith and looted and sailed away with more riches. They continued to land, burn towns and villages and raid. In the September of 1547, a big encounter at the Battle of Pinkey led to the English seizing control of most of the southern Scotland. Musselburgh was burned, and all whilst this was going on, Mary Queen of Scots was taken away to France for her own safety. And then to rub further the salt into the wound for the English, she was betrothed to the French Dolphin, or heir to the throne. 
The War of the Rough Ruin continued after Henry VIII's death and peace was declared in March of 1550. And further peace talks continued until the reign of the boy King Edward VI with his advisers and in particular Edward Seymour, the Lord Protector, having a key role in the discussions. Edward Seymour had been given instructions to put all to fire and sword and because of the war, ignited by the proposal to marry, thousands were killed. Seymour's attack on the Scots was described as the most savage campaign launched upon them, but the fact Mary was married off to the French caused chaos. It meant that Edward, yet again, did not have a marriage match, and as the Protestant Reformation continued, with stronger actions against Catholics occurring and bigger changes to the church, the threat of invasion in England had never been greater. When Edward came onto the throne, he was crowned weeks after his father's death, but he would never have a marriage arranged for him. It was hoped greatly that he would have a wife and also a family that would secure the Tudor dynasty on the throne for centuries to come. The plan was for Edward to marry and then have many children who would become the heirs. But the agreement between Edward VI and Mary Queen of Scots was much more fiery than ever imagined. And it incited a ferocious war between two enemies which had been at war for centuries Mary Queen of Scots later had a rather troubled love life following the early death of her French king husband. Her love life and relationships would ultimately lead to her being forced to abdicate the Scottish throne. But imagine if the king and queen had married, and this would have united England and Scotland, but it would have caused great offence to Scotland. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.